This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. It's time to get geeky, get techy. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Yes, I am back in Pittsburgh, PA, and not a hotel room in Phuket, Thailand, of all places. With me in studio, in the physical meat space, it is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter is ChillaTech.net. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back. Welcome back stateside. Yes, <laughs> yes. My first full 24 hours in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and and it feels great. It feels awesome. So, uh, like I said, this is the awesome cast. Uh, we like to tech t- talk tech with the people that are using it in the world. Myself, a video professional, social media, and podcasting with Sorgatron Media. And, of course, Shilla is a uh, gadget guru over Big Bank International Incorporated. I want to start adding Esquire to the end of my name. Esquire. Chilla Esquire. Uh, but you can check us out at awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to the show, uh, with our, uh, which hopefully our, our host will be back up by the time this is happening, or you're not hearing this anyways. I don't know. Uh, so I guess they can't let us know if they're not here. I guess if you can't hear this, if you can't hear this, let us know. <laughs> Well, yeah, actually, it looks like our host is back up. Um, but anyways, no, uh, subscribe to the show on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or the video feeds on the uh, um, YouTube or Facebook page. You can join us live.awesomecast.net. No matter what technology we're using this week, for instance, you guys were at least attempting to use Google Hangout, and that didn't work out, but those embeds are over there. But uh, these days, we've been live streaming over on the Facebook page, so make sure you're following us on Facebook. Turn on your live notifications, and uh, you know, and you'll get, you, whenever we go live for this wherever we go live for other interviews that may come up in the in, in the next several months uh for the awesome chat program that kind of stuff and also uh you can check us out over on rivers edge pgh.com we are there on the stream thursdays 8 a.m after funny money and some other great sorgatron media productions over there like our friends at fishing without bait uh and, and other things also big thanks to our patreon supporters Mike Fedor, I'm at, at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter, and Matt Weller actually is a new Patreon subscriber. I didn't realize he actually signed up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much for uh, supporting the show. And uh, we have a little bit of a questionnaire out there. If you are on, the, are on the Patreon, we're looking at maybe changing some things about how we do Patreon. So we'd love your feedback on that. So please go check your email. Uh, check the Patreon page. Um, you have to be a Patreon supporter in order to see the question, though. Uh, so uh, a little bit of feedback on that. And, 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 and if there's anything you'd like to see from the Patreon, what kind of extra stuff could we do? Um, it's it's a little easier for us to do it for the wrestling show, but I, I haven't figured out like what exclusive content we could do that maybe uh, uh, get you guys on board with that. Uh, let us know um, uh, over at AwesomeCast on the Twitter or the Facebook uh, or through the Patreon page itself. You can message us there. So, Chilla, man, we have can, can we do like two um, awesome I, I, things of the week? That, since I it's was going to ask, so, I wanted to do two as well. Is this, is this, since there's, I mean, not that I have two things lined up, but I'll think of one. Um, but uh, we can take turns and 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 that'll that'll give you some time as we switch on and off mm-hmm. to 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 come up with one. Uh, but yeah, so uh, uh, but okay, so what, what's what's your first one? So my first one is the uh direct tv now okay so i'm sure you've probably heard of this as a as a cord cutter i've heard things um at&t obviously owns direct tv um direct tv now is their ip based uh tv service um i actually signed up i signed up <gasps> i signed up for two reasons okay so reason number one well, actually, I could sign up for three reasons. Mm-hmm. Reason number one is if you sign up now for the $35 price level, you get in at like their, I think, $65 or $70 price level. About 120 channels, isn't it? Yeah. And you're locked in mm-hmm. at that price. They claim forever. Um, 
I'm sure sooner or later it's just going to be like unlimited data when you want to change that plan. You'll have to to, to change the pricing. Certainly. But <clears throat> um, I, I was pretty impressed with the channel listing as well as the guy at the AT&T store had um, kind of a channel listing and then a, I don't know if I was supposed to see it, but like a negotiated channel listing, the ones that were under negotiation, okay. which Root Sports is a part of, Ooh, which was a big, a big one for me. And, and it's one that this doesn't have the CBS Viacom channels, the, you know, like the, the your local CBS it, affiliate. It doesn't have Showtime or anything like that. Right. It has uh, HBO and Cinemax if you want it. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly enough, yesterday, I think CBS announced that they're negotiating with with uh direct tv now it's only a matter of time i think right. especially being something as big as direct tv that already has relation relationships with all these I, I like i think i think they have the best chance of getting about everybody versus say well i guess sling is dish network yeah too so really i mean this is it really it is is dish network versus that versus playstation view yep. so um reason number two was if you paid for three months so Paid for three months, you got a free Apple TV. Is it a new gen new generation or Fire? Is it was a Fire so TV? So if you paid, I think for a one month up front, it was it was a Fire TV. If you paid for three months up front, it was a free Apple TV. Okay. Um, I'm interested in taking an Apple TV in our house and making it solely kind of cord cutter esque. Okay. Um, to kind of show that, that we're not going to have issues with certain shows and whatnot. Um, and reason number three is for AT&T customers, it doesn't go against your data. Now, I know the FCC is already as going like, after at least until the FCC says differently. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know that may change, but um, there's other carriers kind of doing some of this type of stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't imagine it changing anytime soon. And if if it comes down to it, I got an Apple TV for 50 bucks off if I cancel after my three months are up. Yeah. So it's no no harm, no foul there. Um, <clears throat> so I've been using the service. I'm pretty darn impressed with the app they have and kind of you can curate content. I like, the one thing I do like is all the channels are in alphabetical order. What? I don't have to deal with like, this is channel four, this is channel 11, this is channel two. Like I don't have to find what's what. I can just look down the list in alphabetical order, find what I want to watch and start watching. Um, they do have a back catalog. It's not a hundred percent up to like yesterday's episodes, but I would say it's it's probably about from what I've seen a month back. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to start a show that you weren't necessarily watching now, you can definitely go back and get older so, episodes. So they just like kind of seem like the rando on demand offerings you get from like an, a Comcast or something like that. So I'm not familiar with. That you, okay, you haven't been a part of that era. That's right. You've yeah. been a, you've been a cord cutter a little longer than I have. Yeah. Well, before, well, back in the day, I, I I know like you had your on demand thing, and here's like here's three episodes of this show that happens to be running. You know, and oh, it's okay. pretty. You know, hey, here's some stuff here. Here's some stuff. Now the Xfinity thing, I think, is a little more robust because I've I've gotten to see uh, through Chachi's account, uh, like how like okay, here's Doctor Who. You know, and it's more. Hulu? entire seasons yeah it's more hulu like but not for everything it depends on what it is much like hulu right um so so it, it sounds like it's probably like a smattering like that it, it definitely seems like a smattering it is it does seem but it does seem to go back current season back to episode one mm-hmm. up through everything minus a month okay um so they're keeping they're keeping from the start of the season and then they're it looks like they're holding about the, like the last two or three episodes obviously we had a break at thanksgiving um and even your fox now and your your other apps they're not giving you up to the moment release so i i, I can't really hold them against anything for that right right um they, they're claiming dvr coming next year the one thing that I was impressed with, and I'll, I'll have to see if I can still do it because the app just updated today. Um, there's your typical commercial breaks, but I can fast forward through them. Okay. So I can drag the slider across. It's not a forced view. Um, when I was doing CW on Xbox and some other stuff, it was it was horrible because it was forced commercial watching and it was the same yeah, commercial and we, and over, this and issue. over and we, over again. We saw this issue on the CW app with Google, the Google Chrome and uh the apple tv where 
um, like it would it would pause, like mm-hmm. our our video would pause, but it kept going. And we're like, okay, we need to skip back. We accidentally back out of it because we actually hit the menu button on the Apple TV. And then we have to go through all the commercials from the beginning to the next to last segment of the show that we were in the middle of, Mm -hmm. right? Which is freaking annoying um, versus a little easier and and less glitches over on the Chromecast. So, yeah, and and that's the thing that bugs me. I mean, okay, great. We'll get it free. But holy crap, these commercials, right? Still better than they used to be. Still better than what even CBS All Access was doing with their commercials when we were watching Supergirl over there last year. But still, I think a long way to go. Yeah. So so, so uh, I know some people were having problems the first day. I think they they had a lot more people that they had anticipated mm-hmm. because actually I went to the Apple Store. So it launched, I think, last Wednesday. I went to the Apple Store on Thursday. They were completely out of Fire TV and Apple TV stock. Okay. So obviously enough people went in there. And signed up immediately for it. Um, they were out of all of the pamphlets. They were pretty much out of everything. Wow! Um, this is what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, I was. So, I was really, really surprised. You know, I was even looking at um, today. I was looking at because we maxed out our data plan this month somehow. You know, thirty gigs. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, as I got to look at my account because somehow I did fifteen gigs on my phone, and I'm like, that doesn't even seem doesn't possible. Right. I think something got left on or something. But anyways, I'm looking at it, and they're like, oh, you should upgrade to this, and it's the unlimited thing. But the unlimited maxes out at 22 gigs before it slows you down. It slows you down. And you don't get hotspots. They take away oh, your hotspots. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. Screw that. Yeah. So, but, I, but, but again, that's DirecTV, like, to add... Add Direct TV for thirty five bucks a month plus you know all the hardware and stuff. Now if they offered that with this. I think that's more of an interesting mm-hmm. thing, right? Yeah, and I, and I like the fact it's no other than plugging an Apple TV or or a number of other streaming devices into your TV. Um, I didn't check, but they did say it's coming to the Samsung smart TVs. There'll be an app. Um, yeah. there's already apps for for other services for, so for it other doesn't stuff. Really surprise me. Roku there isn't yet, but that that should be on the on the way. Uh so I mean it's hard to yeah, roll that out to everything, I'm sure. And I know I th- I think some people were having problems day 1 getting some errors. You're only allowed two simultaneous streams. Um and yeah. one qu- which to me isn't that big of a deal. There's only 3 of us and Christopher's usually on Yeah. Something else, maybe maybe family of four that all watches TV and none separate together rooms. in okay. separate rooms, like that's a problem. But no, I think for a lot of people, it's going to be just fine. So so that and I know some people on day one were getting an error saying that they had, were already using two concurrent streams and that was their first stream. So I, I think they've gotten a lot of those issues ironed out. I've already, like I said, the the app launched with the service last week. It's already updated. Um, I'm hoping they get more tie-ins with. Um, the apps like like the Fox app, um, you can get like the last six episodes from the Fox app um, by by being a cord cutter in general. Mm-hmm. You get the whole back catalog if you're if you're on a provider. Um, Dish is on that provider no- list, or Directv's on the provider right. list, but Directv right. now is not. Okay. Yet. Okay. Um, I was going to say that's one thing I heard on some of the cord cutting shows of people getting the Directv and just never hooking up never the hooking hardware. It up. Because you get all that stuff through all the apps. Right. And that's where I'm looking at kind of going with this is can I can I replace cable boxes? Can, how will this work out? And what I'm really looking for is I have to make a decision. Do I want to invest in some upgraded uh, TiVo hardware? Because my, one, my, one of my TiVo is pretty old. Um, or do I want to just kind of switch to a to a streaming and get an Apple TV or two because TiVo does have the monthly fee along with it. Um, but what I really like about TiVo is curated content. And what I really like about Apple's promise is curated content. So, and where I'm, I'm also interested to see what direction Apple goes is how many of, how much of it's going to be, you don't have access to this, but if you pay for it here, you can have it versus TiVo only shows you, Stuff that it knows you get for free, mm-hmm. um, which I really like about the service. Now, I pay for the TO service in general, so I'm kind of paying for that. Um, even if Apple were to give me 50-50, like show me 50% of things I could purchase and show me 50% of things that were free, 
I would I would I would probably move to Apple and get rid of the TiVo just to save the monthly TiVo charge. Um, but I guess only time will tell. And it, it seems like every day there's something about the Direct TV now offering where you know they're they're in negotiations with this, they're updating that, they're already talking about you know, the cloud DVR. So I'm I'm hoping they can catch up and hopefully leapfrog some of the competition. So we'll see. Let me know how that goes. I'm I'm curious about that. I mean, I, I don't. The biggest thing that that pushes me away from like picking up one of these streaming services is when do I have time to watch TV when it's on? Mm -hmm. So if there's no DVR and and if the on demand isn't up to snuff potentially, then I don't I, I don't know. Like really, what what does it do versus what I'm already getting out Hulu and the CW app? So looking at that. Um, here's okay. Here's something. Uh, so this is going to be it my. I guess I'm going to do my multiple awesome things a week as kind of a recap of things that stuck out on my trip. First of all, uh, you know the announcement happened, and I'm I'm, I'm confirming this because I, I'm kind of curious how this works. Uh, you, you know, the, we had the announcement about Netflix this past week, mm -hmm. um, which thanks for doing that before I got on my 13 hour <laughs> flight and had good internet to download a couple of things to watch on there. Um, oh, actually, that's a whole other thing. My flight, uh, I'll get around to it. Um, but, but so they had the down, you can download stuff on, on Netflix, not everything, but most of the things. So I pulled it up and I, and it let me log in with my account in Thailand. Uh, and I was in Thailand and if you didn't catch a special last week, uh, basically, um, um, I was documenting a vacation of sorts. <laughs> so, and we, we recorded a lot of interesting stuff that we'll probably do some stuff with. Um, what is... What's the Kiefer Sutherland show that just came on where he becomes president? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, wait, about. wait, I know I know another show. Shooter was one of these. So I logged in and it seems to it seemed to have logged me in as as okay, here's your account. You're a subscriber to Netflix, but we're going to give you Thailand's Netflix. So I got the stuff that was available in Thailand, but not in America. So when I pulled it up. <laughs> Like the first things I noticed was that program that I knew was a, a program on ABC, uh, the one where Kiefer Sutherland becomes president, whatever, um, and Shooter, which is a show that I know was advertised on USA Network, are on Netflix. And so it wasn't Shooter, the Marky Mark movie. No, it was a series. Okay, because it had the little mark, just like the Chelsea show. It says new episodes daily, weekly, whatever the case was, right? And I'm like, well, that's weird. Uh, so I looked at it, and and. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Netflix has these deals. Uh, think of because for a while I was watching a Sky feed but for for uh, wrestling, and you would see stuff advertised like Modern Family is advertised on that channel, but so is like HBO's Game of Thrones. Right? They pick up like they get rights to stuff. Mm -hmm. There's no HBO. There. There's no ABC Network. There's no you know stuff like that. And usually they're like a season or a half behind because that was a big thing. Glee. Yeah, Glee actually kind of moved their start and end times for seasons so, and actually and actually simultaneously released in the US and in the UK. But I thought because was, they had, there was so much piracy but, going but on. But I thought that was interesting. So Netflix is apparently picking up some of these United States shows and in other countries they're 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 doing this. Also stuff like Back to the Future. I don't think Back to the Future is running right now. Um, but yeah Back to the Future Part Two was was available um, on that. Yeah and it's not available here in the States. But um but no, I, I, th I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, roll that around to, speaking of which, because I had actually grabbed some stuff off of iTunes, so I'm like, okay, if there's nothing uh, I have to do on the plane, I have a lot of time, I'm going to put it on my iPad. Turns out, um, when you're on China Air, you're not allowed to have a cell phone. What? Like, I don't know how much they're enforcing this, but they're like, yeah, no, if you have anything, even if it has airplane mode, please turn it off. And do not turn it on. And it's actually against like China law. And you tell me China law is involved. I'm not pushing the envelope, okay? Uh, so, th but thankfully, the flight we had, uh, at least the 13 hour cross over, by the way, we went over the Arctic Ocean. So, I went over the North Pole to get to Beijing. I thought was interesting. But they had the entertainment center like in the back of the seat, which basically looks like an Android tablet. Um, okay. So that was interesting, uh, it, and they had a lot of games on there and everything. Pretty cool because they actually have a motion sensor too. So I wanted to dig in to see if it applied to some of the games because I, I every time I moved my hand over, I saw these like little dim red lights pop up, and I was curious about that. On the way back, um, 
and I also had like another kind of light on it for, for when it activated. And every time I moved my hands towards the screen, it would light up and light up the screen. So it's like a motion detection. It's a see. motion detector to kick it on before you get to it, hmm. basically. That, that was kind of fun. Now, are you allowed tablets if you're not allowed phones? Or is it anything? I saw people with laptops, so okay. and so I guess I could have I could have I could have gotten out my iPad, but um, now I wonder if it's it's a it, 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 there was comments about the equipment, um, but I also wonder if this was a new thing. Maybe I only saw one notice about the Samsung phone, and that was at the ticket desk in uh, Phuket, Thailand, while we were waiting on stuff. They had a, the big thing. Nothing was said by name or anything like that. I haven't been on an American flight since. Mm -hmm. um the whole thing came up so so i thought that was kind of curious um and side note has nothing to do with technology but uh the plane we took from bangkok to phuket was air knock a n o k and they they paint the um they paint the plane like a bird okay has a beak on the end and everything fantastic it, it looks it, it feels like it's kind of their fun little southwest airlines of uh, Asia, basically, um, they give you a little snack pack and everything, and it was it was it was pretty nice. Um, but anyways, uh, so so that was kind of fun. Not looking forward to thirteen hours on a plane to go anywhere <laughs> anytime soon. By the way, I don't care how nice it was in there. But um, so I, I, I we came across things on our adventures. We actually uh, spent Sunday night. We went downtown uh, Manhattan, checked out the lights at uh, uh, Rockefeller Center and everything like that. But then we come across a spectacle store. Chilla. I saw pictures. You saw pictures of this. So yeah, um, so we're we're over at the Fifth Avenue because uh, 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 guys with was hadn't seen the Fifth Avenue store or been down in it at least. Uh, so we're doing that. We're and there's some stuff about pictures. And yeah, this is it, it's a storefront right around the corner, and uh, this is like at the corner of Central Park, Fifth Avenue. And yeah, there's two little. And this, this looks like a production photo. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it does look like a production, this, like production look, photo. It, this looks like the, like the promotional photo for this, the way it turned out. But yeah, there's two there's two um, vending machines, as we've been hearing about with the Snapchat spectacles. Also very interesting, they have a couple flat screens that are spinning. Because as we talked about how it takes the video in circles, so mm -hmm. anywhere you turn your phone, it'll work. So they're demonstrating that by spinning a a. Panel. Like, like a yeah, like a thirty-two, forty-inch panel uh, with videos playing. Is it out in front or where is it? it it's along the sides of, okay. of it, like uh, along the walls. Like there's one on the one wall to the right when you're looking at this picture, and there's like like two or three of them as you're probably standing in line. Um, and it turned out they did talk about this. Um, um, uh, O'Malik was on this week in tech this week, and they were talking about this, and they said it was like a three-hour wait and everything. It was closed. This was like Sunday night at like nine o'clock, and it obviously it wasn't going to be open. Um, I don't know. Maybe it would have been. It would have been great if it was. We tried getting in. It was locked. Because um, <laughs> we're both, we both said like, you know, if this thing's open, we'd probably pick one up. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, one way or another, right? Uh, but no, I thought that was an interesting find there. Of course, you know, New York City. Where else are you going to find something? There's another shot of that there. And oh, that's us playing in the Apple Store. Um, so aside from that, uh, talked about the planes. Talked about I, I found some bootleg. Oh, I found a I found a quote Apple Store over there. Is there three Ps or no 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 <laughs> no no no? It didn't try. It's, it it calls itself Studio Seven, but it's definitely trying to be an Apple Store. <laughs> I don't think Apple is in Thailand. Like, I don't think Apple stores are in Thailand, but they had this. This was in the one mall down there in Phuket. Um, pa Patong, I think the main town there is Patong, uh, where we were hanging out. And uh, I thought, yeah, this was kind of interesting. And again, everything's laid out kind of very Apple-like and everything like that. Um, and uh, they, they had a couple other things. Like, they had something called Power Buy there that, that looked like kind of a mini Best Buy that, you know, again, had like an Apple section, had the phone sections and everything like that. Um there's a, 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 a sadly Katie isn't here or else I would show her the um, um, Hello Kitty stores that I found that are probably not cost to be quite honest. Um, but anyways, uh, and then we were also in their basically their Walmart called the Big C, which sounds really ominous, I think, um, because Big C means something else here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, looking at the phones, there are a lot of, uh, of course, there's stuff like um, Vivo phones and and. Uh, who do the TVs that, that we're more aware of here, um, um, brands called Oppo, that were very, very unapologetic about looking like iPhones. 
like the camera the camera app looks like the iphone the the it looks like an iphone 7 you know and, and, and i thought that was kind of interesting um i talked about last week on the quick update about the tablet at the airport that would to give your feedback on how clean the the toilet was mm-hmm. <laughs> so and yeah it had a, a bunch of you know smiley to frowny faces and say how was how was your to- your your bathroom experience well, i guess they got to make sure they're they're hitting every person as far as language and and whatnot so well, it language it i guess easy. but it, it just it just seemed like it was like the first thing we saw past um customs and uh yeah i thought it, it, it kind of stuck out a little bit um by the way no pokemon games on james bond island there was a there was no pokemon game there so uh, now i wonder like does that mean because I mean it's it's pretty treacherous. Like there was a lot of places we went that you're like, wow, this is not a thing they would let you do in America, right? Mm-hmm. Like like there's basically you're on the edge of the cliff and there's not really there's no guardrail, there's not anything like that. Uh, so I, I imagine some people have been playing Pokemon game on James Bond <laughs> Island, and there's a sign there for you guys on video and like falling off the cliff or something perhaps, and they have to go save them. It feels like feels like a little bit. So. Um, somebody was. I just saw that somebody was thinking about uh, smoke going past Chilla. We we got some incense down here. It, may, it gets a little smoke from time to time. Um, other than that, I I was impressed. I, I okay. I'm not usually in very very nice hotels, and I didn't realize that you put the card in the slot next to the door, and it turns on all the lights in the room. At some of these, oh, I've never seen that. Well, I got to the first hotel. And there's already a card there, so I didn't even think about it. And I was like, well, how do I turn all these lights off? <laughs> and why are the lights always on when I come in? Like, the housekeeping just left every light on, right? Um, and then the second one, yeah, I put it in there because there was no light switch. It was just this glowing thing. I'm like, oh, I guess this goes in here. TV turns on to the, the hotel channel and everything like that. And they had a nice panel in Phuket where I could, like, plug in all my stuff. Like the desk was right in front of the TV, and 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 I brought my Windows laptop, and I have a little bit of a monitor blinking option with it, or a problem with it. So I just you you know HDMI it right in, and I just used the big screen uh, as my monitor. So that was, was really the helpful. HDMI built right into the desk, and it went right onto the TV. Yeah. Okay. I've been in some of those hotels, and I love that feature. It, both these were Novatel. Is, okay. Is the thing? Yep. So, there's Novatel right in Times Square, and there's. Is there? Yeah, yep. yeah, it's it's a kind of a higher end one. It looks like mm-hmm. so. And by the way, here's a shot of uh, the rock at James Bond Island from uh, from uh, the man with the golden gun, actually, which I found on Amazon Prime, and I was watching bits of it um, a little bit. There, there, there it is out there. Me doing the <laughs> James Bond pose. Had to, had to. I saw some people doing it. I was like, that's a good idea. Of course, you do the James Bond pose out here. Um, but no, a lot of fun there. I mean, uh, other than that, like, I didn't find any video games. Huh. Anywhere, even like in the mall, anything like every once in a while, I'd see like an Xbox sticker, um, like in the electronics section or something. Um, they every once in a while, there's a Pokemon thing or a Mario thing, but I did not find anybody like selling video games, anything like that. Even though, like, on an island, I, I there was a kid playing video games on his tablet. It's so, I mean, it's really interesting because there's like this, this hey, we're out in the middle of nowhere. But these people all have cell phones and they're all on tablets, you know, kind of thing. So, did you see anyone like was tablet and phone? Because you you always hear like in a lot of places people can't afford multiple devices, so it's usually now they've kind of left the laptop behind and have moved to cell phone or tablet. Is did that seem the case, or did it people feels have a like, lot of laptops? It feels like too? everybody has a giant phone. Okay. No, I, I don't think I was in a lot of positions because we were definitely in very um, touristy or uh, I want to say Americanized, but like like the hotel we're in is like no, nah, a lot of a lot of Easterners come here, like you could tell, okay. right? They, like they they set this up to be very comfortable for you, um, and but no, I I, I mean there's there's internet cafes around and everything like that, uh, but no, I, I I can't say that I saw anybody with anything other than a phone. Mm-hmm. you know out and about so but that was interesting um thing i wish they had here they have countdowns for their lights so you know how long your red light's gonna last oh yeah not just for like the walking no 
walk, no, don't walk. It's, it's like here's here's a red light and uh, and it's a countdown from 130 seconds. Or then I like saw one that was like 300 seconds left. I'm like, oh, damn, it's a long <laughs> one. Um, but it, you know, it, it, I thought that was that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Other than that, in the this this came up in the story while I was gone about the McDonald's kiosk, and I actually mm-hmm. shared it on my page, which. Got a little bit of controversy, actually. But but I went to the McDonald's, and probably because, again, it was a nicer neighborhood and everything. Um, and I wanted to check out McDonald's because their, their menus, if you go to, like, a KFC or a McDonald's or something over there, it is not what you expect here. It's, it's, it's like, there's green tea everything. There's, <laughs> there's just a lot of really different options. You know, Asian di- dishes. Um, um, Ronald does, the, po- does the, the, the bow pose that they do in Thailand. Um... You know, it, it, but there was a kiosk, and you know, touchscreen kiosk ordered my thing. I just got a Happy Meal or something because I just want to try something out. And uh, and you run your card, and the red alert, Star Trek red alert sound goes off in the back, and you get the, they let you know your your number is being prepared, and and they call your number, and here you go. That's it. Very cool. I I welcome that here. Oh yeah. And I don't know about because somebody came on uh, my my Facebook and was like, well. Uh, they're going to lose all these jobs. And you're going to pay for the welfare. It's like, well, you know what? <laughs> I I think that's a bigger issue than that. Which again, there was a really interesting conversation on uh, Twig or Twit this last couple of weeks about exactly that. Um, I think it's uh, one less thing people have to do there. That maybe they'll get my order right at McDonald's. Uh, but no, I think you know we, we already have touch screens at Sheets and all kinds of places like that. I I, I think it absolutely makes sense in this kind of context. Definitely. So. Um, but other than that, like in the city, like the city feels like a New York city or something like that. Just maybe a little more insane, uh, traffic feels like it's all over the place. Um, pl- everybody's on a bike. Oh, I was riding the bus and one girl says like, like it, it seems like nobody has a crappy car here. Like they're fairly good looking cars. Right. I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, cause anybody that can't afford a car has a bike <laughs> and look how many bikes are out there. So, like, you just have a job that you need to get to. You're or, you're riding a scooter. Okay. You, not nobody has a Harley. But well, and then, uh, well, I'm guessing the weather. I mean, it's not like they have to deal with snow. Oh yeah, it's tropical. Everything's open. Uh, the lobby was open. You know, uh, for for the one hotel. Um, it's like there's no front doors on any business at, at this at this point. But again, it's tropical. It rains, and that's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's. I think it's the equivalent of if you were south of Mexico, okay, in in, in our hemisphere, as to where we were at. So no, it was you didn't have to cut over the the polar caps. Yeah, in the exactly, exactly, exactly. It was yeah, just the other side of the planet. Yeah. So I was telling Missy, I was like, this is literally as far away from home as I can probably possibly get. <laughs> so yeah, uh, well, the time zone was exactly opposite. Exactly oh. twelve hours. It at least it, it makes it easy. Super Kinda easy. easy. Oh, and really confusing too. But <laughs> at the same time, so all right, that's going to encompass all my awesome things. Was basically Thailand. I'd love to go back there, but not anytime soon. Maybe after we invent transporters. Um, what is your second awesome thing? That was your awesome thing of last week. What's your awesome thing of this? Week? Awesome thing of this week is: Have you seen? And I think we talked about it before on the show. Navdi. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. N-A-V-D-Y. So NAVD is the solution for people that may not ha- have an older car or even a newer car with without a lot of the additional, you know, big screen, GPS built in, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, their device is kind of, it sits up on your dashboard. Um, and if you scroll up to the top of that, it, it'll kind of, in the background it'll kind of play a short video and you can see the dial there so you put this device up on your dashboard it has a clear piece of glass that you can kind of see through and it kind of looks like it projects everything up onto like a heads-up display right on on your um windshield Mm -hmm. um and then you have a this dial that you can strap to your steering wheel and you can use it to navigate it also has much like you were talking about the back of the headrest with the tablet it has motion detection built in it um, and then it integrates with Android and iOS, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, it does have direct ties into Google Maps for for um, navigation, but it also has its own built-in GPS. Um, the price does come in a little bit high. 
Comes in at about 799 bucks. You can get it for as low as 33 bucks a month with 0% financing um, or pay that, that 799 right up front. Um, I, I really like the UI. It looks really clean. Um, and then, like I said, being able to tie into, that's the one thing that I was going to play around with Android Auto because you can actually download download Android Auto for Android without having it built into your car. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't integrate with Apple Music. Mm. Even though there is an Apple Music over on Android, this does integrate with Apple Music. It integrates with Siri. It integrates with Google. Um, pretty neat technology. And the thing I like about this too is you get a new car, you just move it with you. It actually plugs into the OBD port kind of like the the device you have. The automatic. Where it can get some of the, the telemetrics and, and information from there. But it, all in all, you can customize the, the display to kind of look like how you want with maybe a... I think they gave an example where it had the, a, a directional... It almost looked like a, one of those bubble compasses with your speed in the center and then off to the right was kind of the current app, whether it be a music app or, or whatnot. So... Pretty pretty neat device. I think it is a little bit priced a little bit high, but I'm sure yeah. as competition comes but into the market, it, it'll it's basically it could come a, down. You say you know it downloads Android Car. It's basically a phone. Like I, I feel like it has it, it all has to tie into your phone to be able to use the the phone features and and some of that yeah, stuff. The but, data, but, but it sounds like yeah. it has navigation built in and everything like that, uh, independently of your phone. Yeah, and I yeah, and I like that it's it's tied in um or it's kind of a heads up display versus having to look off to the right Mm -hmm. to see anything that you would typically have to in a newer car and i've seen people put phone holders in interesting places like up by up in the upper corner up by their mirror and that always seems like it's a little much and in a way i've seen a lot of people mount like the old school gps's like the garmin's up Mm -hmm. in the upper left hand corner Mm -hmm. which i always thought was odd Definitely been interesting. Um, like, yeah, yeah. I, I just don't. I don't know how I feel about posting my phone like on my door, you mm-hmm. know. So uh, me, I, I have a uh, because of the console in my Escape, which looks like a damn command center with l- as many buttons as you could stuff in that thing. Um, it has like the first, you know, Microsoft Sync and stuff in it too. But um, I found a CD holder like that goes into the CD player, and mm-hmm. it's like it's like the perfect spot. Like over, it's to the right and it's down, yeah, but it's still like it's not, it's not falling off, it's not doing anything like that. It's just a nice spot and it's on a swivel, and I can move the phone and say, "Is this right?" You know, and, and, and swing it over to the passenger and stuff like that. It's been really helpful. So awesome. Well, hey, let's give a shout out to our friends. And I know, I know there was, uh, uh, I have not gotten into this, but I think Slice on Broadway has a mobile club. What? Yeah, did you see this on our Slack? Because uh, we were talking about it, getting ready for Awesome Cast, and uh, Doug is telling us that Slice, uh, yeah, Slice has a mobile club all about the pizza deals on my phone. Uh, so uh, I don't find some more information over there at sliceonbroadway.com. Our good friends over there uh, uh, hooking us up. Chill, I know. I, I was like, hey, are you coming to the studio? And he says, will there be pizza? And I says, of course there is. Of course there is, Chilla. Um, and that's been, why I'm here. They've been supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for well over two years at this point. So thank you so much to them for supporting the show, supporting some great content here in the neighborhood in Beachview. Check them out. They're right on Broadway Avenue, the original, the OG location here in Beachview. And, of course, check out their other locations, Main Street in Carnegie, PA, or down there at PNC Park, the home of the P- Pittsburgh Pirates. They've been uh, uh, expanding and been doing great, getting in the news, and uh, uh, great to see them growing along with our show. Uh, so go check them out. Check out some Slice. Let them know that the awesome cast has sent you. Maybe give them a high five. Look at the elbow. Don't hurt anybody, but uh, uh, let them know they're awesome, too. You heard about them on the awesome cast. Check them out. You will not be disappointed. SliceOnBroadway.com. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the show. So... Uh, what else is going on, Chilla? What, Chilla, what is the biggest story that I missed while I was gone for a week and a half? Biggest story what is the missed? biggest thing that happened in the last week and a half that I was gone? While I was out of the country, not to notice any of these things. Did you say, so, and I, and I think it's been with just in the, within the last couple of days, but Amazon's, um, uh, grocery store mm-hmm. with no cashier. 
Um, I think if they can start to span these out, I think it's going to be a game changer, especially if they can get into areas like here where there's where there's lack of competition. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we, we, we have I feel like we have a lot of of places, whether it be the Target, the Walmart Superstore, the but like when you get to your giant eagles and your shop and saves, I feel like our stuff has such a heavy markup mm-hmm. on it where I feel like this is really going to force people into competition so explain the concept there because it's cashier free but what are they doing so you so you walk in you grab what you want it's paid for through by you pay for it by through amazon and you're out the door so so it, it seems um if i recall um this is you walk in and i think you pull up a certain app that's connected to your amazon account right mm-hmm. uh and i think it's some kind of barcode that i showed here yeah there's like a qr code sort of thing you scan it on the center when you when you walk in you literally take the things off the shelf put them in a basket however you want to do it and it will notice what you took off the off the shelf it it seems to in their example like this person grabbed this off the shelf and it knows that knows that person did that thing and counts it and then you know she puts it back and takes it back off of her thing so there is, if you're concerned about cameras and facial recognition, <laughs> stay away from this this store, okay? Because th- this is a lot of that. What, but see, I'm interested in this because I'm big on curation anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, like, if I went in there and picked something up and then put it back down and then picked, That's what an, they're oppos- saying. picked an opposing product up and purchased it mm-hmm. that was somewhat like the first product, like I was making a decision. That's more data. And no, then it, literally, no, no, no. Then if it you... impacts my advertising on Amazon. Mm-hmm. I would actually like that because so, then I don't have to sift through as much junk. So, so, so you picked up, I, you know, um, I don't know. Okay, I, I picked up some Tide laundry detergent, but then I saw there's like Amazon Basics is over here for a little, little cheaper. Then so it that's another data point. It knows that I picked up and considered the Tide detergent, put it down, and went for this one instead. Right. That's a data point, and so, I'm fine with giving up that data point if it if it gets me better results. Yeah. The next time I'm on their site, or gives me other options or additional offers coming out of pantry. As long as I didn't put down Tide, and then all I get is Tide Tide advertising because I didn't pick that one. Which I would find or that annoying. <laughs> Why didn't you pick the Tide? What, what's wrong, Chilla? What have we ever done to you? What, don't you want some Tide? I get 18 coupons in the mail for <laughs> free Tide. Well, yeah, that's what it is, right? Because, you, you know, well, yeah, you picked up this one because it was cheaper, right? Or maybe you picked up a different brand because something caught your eye. Yeah, they're going to like, oh, you considered us. Let's push you over the edge. Get your coupon. Mm-hmm. You start using it. And now that's the one you pick up. Try to form a habit. Right. So, um, no, I, and if you're wondering where can you go to enjoy this lovely grocery experience, it's so <laughs> weird. It's, it's Amazon we're talking about, right? It's going to be in Seattle. They, oh, this one does not have the address, does it? I don't think this is the article I was looking at before, but no, no, it, it's, yeah, it's in it's a neighborhood in Seattle. So, yeah, which is their kind of hometown and everything like that. So could this be a thing that scans out? I mean, how we have we have Amazon Flex and everything here in Pittsburgh. I, I discovered the the super secret fulfillment <laughs> center one day over in Crafton. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's an eighteen hundred square foot retail space. They'll be located in their hometown, uh, and uh, so you're gonna have to visit Seattle to to visit this and the I, home of Starbucks. I think this is gonna be. I think this is gonna quickly you think? span out. Yeah, uh, I don't think this is going to be. Uh, we tested it; didn't go so well. I think it's we're, it we're works, working out the bugs. If it works, once they beta tested this and we're like, "Oh, this is a thing that works," you're thinking this is going to be uh, at least like this pops up in East Liberty, this pops up in 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 Chelsea, New York City, this pops up in San Francisco, right? Mm-hmm. At least what, what would be interesting least. too is if they put it near near the fulfillment center and the fulfillment center had the items you wanted, if they could do something where you could go to pick up, go oh, come, yo, come here, go shopping and pick up. There's going to be some, Am- there's going to be Amazon. Lockers. And I'd be happy there with that. Be. I'd be, be happy with that. Yeah. I, I mean, think about it this way. If you can get, if, if you have to wait for them to ship it, it takes, let's say 36 hours, but you can get it. In, you can get it tomorrow morning when our store opens. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely apt to do that. I dig it. I dig it. I like it. Especially if it's on the commute, right? Like, yes. like I go grocery shopping anyway, so do you, 
so so I have a quick story, and I don't think it'll last that long. But do you? We were talking about Pokemon earlier. Do you still Pokemon? No. Um, I I I tend not to go anywhere anymore. Okay. <laughs> and a couple times I tried pulling up. Well, I also I I didn't have a, a great plan for international data. So, like, did you do it when you were in New York because you were in a different location and you wanted to see? Did not think about it when I was in New York because right. again, I was just preoccupied with so much. Anytime I pull it up, it seems like there's no Pokemon around, so I just close it and don't go so, anywhere. So I've noticed an influx of Pokemon in the last couple of weeks. Really? Yes. Well, they did update it, and there's supposed to be like a bunch of new Pokemons. There, so there's there they they haven't announced when the new Pokemon are going to drop. But just if you, they're, they're just that they were going to just that they were going to and there was some stuff last week about it. They, they definitely gave some incentives for around Thanksgiving. You got extra bonus mm-hmm. points. It was kind of like the Halloween it, type yeah. thing. Yeah. The interesting thing was today a bunch of sites all simultaneously um, started showing a Starbucks internal communication, which I know we don't necessarily talk about stuff that may or may not be true. But based on the fact that it's the same communication smattered across a bunch of different sites, I'm fairly confident it's going to be pretty it's pretty on point so starting thursday this thursday starbucks will have a pokemon go frappuccino what and starbucks locations will all become either gyms um or uh pokestops now this is this sounds like when they rolled out in japan what they did with the mcdonald's yes so and what what from what they're saying is Starbucks found that all of their Starbucks locations that were near Pokestops um, or, or gyms saw an influx of clients coming in to purchase things when Pokemon launched. So they, they, they're, they're saying that this is definitely a partnership um, that was requested. And it's interesting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how this goes. Now there's, they're also saying that, the same day this launches, they will also be launching um, the new Pokemon, which can get even more people out and about wanting to get to to, to stops and gyms. There, there's also some some documents in there saying you know this is going to be limited time, but I wonder if we're going to see this kind of partnership elsewhere and and where this takes it. But I wonder, it's winter time here, so I don't see. I see some people. Still, when they're walking around with their phone out playing Pokemon, it was not anywhere near no. launch no, type I, I, thing. I think it's the kind of thing that's going to flux again maybe next year when it gets warm again, at mm-hmm. least for you know everybody not in the southern states, I guess. Um, no, I think this is great. I mean, it makes sense they, they do promotions like this. Uh, it, it's definitely something that would maybe get me more into it. Um, I also noticed because I just popped on Pokemon, but of course now I'm saying again, no GPS and everything went away. But they did roll out the thing where when you pull up the radar in the corner, it actually does show Pokemon that works and, here the, now. and the location. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just pulled it up and it worked. Um, then it doesn't because it says I have no GPS and, and it died. Um, but anyways, which is weird, even though we are in the basement, I never have a GPS problem down here. Hmm. So... Uh, no, I, I think that's really cool. Yeah, anything to kind of... They have to, because you can't just have it be the same old game or anything like that. But no, I, I love that they, they, they are doing that. Like, this, this would make me... Like, I wish this was here, like, a couple months ago. It might not have waned as much. But I know it's like, oh, I go by that church over here and I'll find these things. Like, that's that makes a lot of sense and, and it really does kind of, I think, help that out. So, cool. Oh, we'll get back into the Pokemons, I'm sure. They'll, they'll have a whole new set of problems. Oh, we'll see if... We'll see if the... <laughs> We'll see if they, they some of those places are still complaining. Oh, these Pokemon people. Pokemon people by my monument. What the heck? I love I'm looking at this. There's stuff with my name by it from last week, and I don't remember posting any of this stuff. I have been too busy. One thing I have been doing is playing Solitaire on my iPhone. Because Microsoft brought Solitaire and their card collection games to the iPhone. <laughs> which I logged in with my Xbox account to play. <laughs> <laughs> can you get gamer score can I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, i'm open wow this and the, the reason that i'm shaking my head is because i i know uh, 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 some people i don't want to name any names um that actually the 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 ipad sits like in their kitchen and it is 
pretty much solely a solitaire device. That is all the iPad does oh, is run solitaire. So just don't become one of those people that, hey, I, I have I have all this nice gadgetry and it's all to play solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, hey, who, who, you know, same people that buy a MacBook Pro to do word pros- processing, right? <laughs> the Chromebook. <laughs> exactly. So, man, I wish Kitty was here because there's a couple interesting stories I'd love to touch on. But uh, control more than your BB-88 with your uh, wristband? Yeah, so so um, Sphero released some updates for their, their BB-88 on uh, Black Friday. I think mm-hmm. Apple... I think the Apple Store had a limited edition one. It was kind of like a battle scarred device, but it also came with the new Force Wrist device that oh, lets you control geez. it. Look at that thing! Yeah, that, it's a, it's pretty big, and it's a toy. It's it, it is definitely a toy. Um, but the wrist device, you, you know, you can move your arm and you can do certain things mm. to control BB eighty eight. The thing that I thought was really cool and wait, 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 wait. I got back up more than this story that we're getting into. <laughs> Check out this guy's first Wookiee slow. Look at that. Wait, 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 wait. Look at that. Look at this pimp over here. Look at look at this thing. It's a Wookiee. Is that a? Is that a? It's a robe. It's a robe. Yeah. Somebody put that on my Christmas list. <laughs> That's amazing. Look at that thing. I'm if sorry. you wear that, if you wear the, if you get that and you wear it for the show, I'll wear my Iron Man onesie. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a christmas episode it's gonna be a slumber party uh which it almost becomes when i get start drinking but anyways uh yeah so so there you go so, so they've they've tied in with if this look then at that. him look at that guy impressing his wife <laughs> so so it's not just the bb88 but with if this then that you can control anything that you can do by recipe so i thought that was a pretty cool way i i don't have the bb88 and i probably wouldn't be able to get it till sometime next year I'm going, but, correct, I'm going to correct you just so you don't get any more uh, messages. Uh, BB-8. Oh, BB-8. Sorry. Yes. The um, I probably wouldn't. I'm probably not going to pick that up till next year, but I would pick up the force band ahead of time just so I could do things like Why? wave my wait, hand wait, to wait, unlock wait, wait, wait. the door. Why can't I do that with my pebble? Why can't I do that with my Apple watch now? Because there's no tie in for motion. Really? Like I, I, I could, I could go onto the device and do, do like I could tap something, but this is all motion driven. So you could wave your hand at your front door, and all your lights are going to come on. I think Krauss has the uh, Wookie rope. He does. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's offering to borrow it. So I might have to take you up on that. So, um, anyways, he doesn't want to be a Wookie, man. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, that's cool. Because my thing is, a lot of times, and, and I have, I will say, I've used my Apple Watch a lot mm-hmm. to control the devices in the house, walking in. Because if you have, and I've used Siri a lot, because if you have 8,000 things in your hands and you can't get to something, it's actually usually you have enough mobility to get to your watch and tap something, or you enough have enough mobility to say, hey, whoever your AI assistant is, you turn on these lights. Yeah. But, and, and I would think the same thing with like the, mo- I would, I would much rather, it'd probably be easier to do the motion mm-hmm. than it would be to, to fire up apps and, and do that kind of thing. Certainly. All right. Well, there you go. There it is. There it is. There's the awesome things. Chilla, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for... I know you guys got together to do the show, even though technology did not work out for you last week. I wrote so, a strongly worded letter to Google. Yeah, okay, we need to get a refund from Google for, for their Hangouts not working. Um, because we were, I wouldn't make, make anybody do this the whole deal with all the technology here and everything going on. Hell, I was, I was fumbling with stuff before the shows tonight, even. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, hey, you know. What's 8 a.m. where you were at? Well, it was 8 a.m. where I was at, so... <laughs> I mean, it was, and it, and this, and the show sounds so bad. The one I did because I, I I brought the adapter for my phone. I brought a good mic, but I did not bring the cord to connect them, <laughs> the XLR cord to connect them. <laughs> so I ended up just using my like iPhone headphones and the little mic on there. 
<laughs> so bad. <laughs> so, but uh, something was in the feed. So, uh, but thank you so much. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. I know our buddies uh, Kraus and uh, uh, Wheels are in there, and a few other people popping in and out all night. Uh, so, thank you so much for joining us there, and uh, and, and let us know your awesome things too. Uh, let us know on Twitter. Let us know anywhere else. I know we had some some uh, uh, people sharing some things uh, over over the week. Thank you so much. We make sure we, we do reshare that and everything. And there's so many stories, again, from last week, from this week, um, that we did not get to um, in the rundown. Things like uh, CNN buys Beam and Casey Neistat with that. Uh, the iCloud calendar spam. It's getting better. Two things happened on my trip that I was like, oh, this is a problem I have to clear up when I get back. That turned out to be issues. One, I kept getting calendar invites that were it's like, hey, get get, get 75% off of uh, NFL jerseys uh, to my iCloud calendar. I'm like, oh, great, somebody's spamming me. And I thought it was just me. Then I heard other people talking about it on the podcast when I finally got around to listening to those. Also, my phone started shutting off at 40%. Guess everybody else is too. Uh, so, <laughs> so there's that. Um, again, Things I can't remedy because there's no legit iPhone store <laughs> in Thailand. So, do you have one of the affected serial numbers? I have to. I, I think I do because I, I heard the numbers. I looked at it and I was like, I think that's the way he said on the podcast. Um, so. I'm gonna throw down in the shout out section just because there's empty space. There's the nine to five map Mac um, battery replacement serial number thing. It, it shows you kind of there you go. How to look so up. if you're it, it, even if you're not, maybe you haven't had the issue yet, just to make sure. And this is a this is a battery replacement. So this, this the battery is going bad in in, in iPhone six S's. Um, and they do have a replacement program for these serial numbers. Missy, you said uh, your sister just had hers replaced, and she was not affected. This was completely um, a separate thing, right? Yeah, hers was completely the battery itself, um, the age of the battery. It was the age of the battery. Well, she just had a six or something, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, which is, which is that too? And if you're covered, because um, I've had them replaced, because um, something was thrashing my five S battery, and they they replaced that for me too. So, what is it? So, if you're following characters, the fourth and fifth position of your serial number is uh, Q three through you know Q three four five six seven eight nine C D E F G, um, and I definitely have so fourth or fifth Q N. I'm actually not affected. Am I? The fourth and fifth position. Yeah, so you're, iPhones. you're outside of the. Now they are. I think they are expanding this, and they also announced today um, there will part of the next iOS update will also include some diagnostic tools for the 6s to allow you to. Um, th that's going to allow them to to do better diagnosis of what the issue is, because and my wife's is QX. Because they are they are thinking that it's not just the battery. There's also another issue. Because it seemed to happen all at the same time, right? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I like it, like something triggered along with the updates. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's definitely definitely been kind of curious. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Awesomecast.net. Subscribe everywhere at Chilla at ChillaTech.net. Chilla on or John's chill on the Facebooks. Mm -hmm. Make sure you come back next week. Come back next week. I'll be here. I'll be here too. And the week after that will be our holiday special. Our holiday special, which includes alcohol. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So please go check that out and uh, check out our awesome chat. Some really good ones came up the last couple of weeks, including talking about drones with our friends at CME Engineering. Uh, we did a video with them a year ago and uh, had a discussion with them. Also, GridWise, which uh, talks about uh, we, we talked about how they're using data to help drivers, Uber and Lyft drivers, figure out when and where to go to be to 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 be more effective and make more money. To be to be honest, a really good discussion with a great Alpha Lab company. Uh, and thanks thanks to Jim Jen over there at Alpha Lab. I saw him sharing and talking about our conversation that we had on the awesome chat as well. Really appreciate that. Anybody we should cover, let us know. Awesome Cast on the Twitter, Awesome Cast on Facebook. Thank you to our awesome audience. You have an awesome week out there. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.